Ben Amias does two difficult things well. He plays golf, a scratch golfer, and he sells $100,000 watches in a recession. Please welcome Francois. Hi, good afternoon. Chandler, you're still in the room? Where is Chandler? Give me Chandler. Where is he? OK, if he has left the room, the statement I want to make is, I'm a Parisian. I'm French. I've been, in the, I've been living in the United States for 10 years now, so you have to apologize for my very thick Brooklyn accent. <laughs> but what I want to say to Chandler is I want to spend one night with him. I'm saying a full night, even, not, even though if I'm going to get married next year to a beautiful woman. But he's going to give me one of his full nights in Paris with me just to try to make him change his mind. That's for Chandler. Now I want to do something else before I start. I'm going to be on my knees. And I say I'm going to get married next year. But before that, Cindy, could you stand up, please? Chandler, here you are. <laughs> I'm going to get you, pumpkin. <laughs> Cindy, now I'm done with you now. I'm done with you now. OK. <laughs> Cindy, could you stand up? Would you marry me? <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is exactly what Cindy said is unbelievable. And that's, that's going to help me, actually, in pitching you and telling you a bit about what we do and who you are and what, what are the big changes in the luxury market today. So first of all, for the people who do not know the Marpigay, very old family. You know, we have been in business since 1975. And actually, we are the last family-owned company with Audemars and Piguet people at the board of directors. So tonight, I'm going to, uh, tonight, this afternoon, sorry, I'm going to say a few things about in, good, in a good way about Audemars Piguet and the luxury watch industry. But I'm going to start with one statement. You were mentioning, Cindy, a little bit earlier about the luxury and the notion of the elite. You know what's the number one luxury watch company in the world? Give me a name. Chopard? You're fired. What? <laughs> no, what's the number one luxury company in the world? Rolex, yes. How many watches do they make a year? A million. A million watches a, uh, a year for the world. For the Marpiguet, we made, we'll have made this year 25,000 watches. We start at $10,000, and the most expensive watch that we sell without a diamond on it sells for $850,000. You understand? I'm going to tell you after why I'm mentioning that. So still everything, this is not a picture from 1900. It's a picture from today, except that it's in black and white. But we still work. We still work like very old fashioned and everything that goes with everything is done by hand. Now, when we talk about luxury, yes, and I do agree. Listen, I really want to marry you because it was beyond. Yeah, lux luxury has been so damaged over the last years. And I have to say, I'm a big shopper. I love, I'm a shoe fetish. I've got a very big disease. I, I love buying shoes for women. Actually, for my future wife. I'll marry you. I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> and my own experience at buying shoes or fashion and everything in stores has been a disaster. And I fight every single day with the people that work with us in our company to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes. And I hate having people come into our stores and being treated the wrong way. So it's an everyday fight. But the latest experiences in the luxury world, whether I was buying fashion in the big names of the, the Gucci, Chanel, Pradas of the world, all the Louboutins, even the Louboutins, sad enough, uh, of the world was not a good one. So it's an everyday fight. And I don't agree about the fact that luxury should be about everything. So we make watches at Audemars Piguet. Why? We might make sunglasses one day, but that's it. We're not going to go into clothing or to other things, or one day maybe even condoms. <laughs> now, this is our biggest failure right here. It's obvious for the people who know advertising. This is an agency that we actually pitched to potentially take our work. And when you came to the office, I said, congratulations. Your brand is invisible. But you know what? It could be said to any single watch company because today, in today's world, this assimilation of all these single watch companies, we are all doing the same thing. And we are one of them. So I'm bashing my own company here because we really, excuse my French, suck at it. Because every single watch ad, whether it's a full page ad or there is a celebrity attached to it, is just a joke. There is no more creativity. And we are living in this watch category. It's maybe the most boring world in the luxury industry. You know why? Because it's a very old world. Yes, most of these brands are 150 years old, managed by men for most of them. So we miss that women thing, which is very important, and that should help us a bit more. 
and it's a very old, old-fashioned world. And we'll have to work on a lot on this, on this. But as I was saying before, 1875, and we have been three core values of the company. And before going through, through the next slides, what I want to say is, last year in our store, in our stores, we got two stores in the United States. We did close to $30 million in revenue. Now, $30 million in revenue, bear with me, it's only 600 watches. So you think that we've sold in our stores watches for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. One number which is really scary is half of the sales were done by phone to people we have never, never met. We do not know them. We don't know their faces. We just know a name, an address, a phone number, an email address, and a credit card number or wire instruction information. And that's it. And compared to what we are doing only two or three years ago, that's scary. Because people came to us directly. We couldn't know how to pitch them. The advertising didn't do it because the advertising media, the regular media, doesn't work the way it used to work because when people come and see you, the W's of the world, the bazaars of the world, the Vogue of the world say, you know what, our net worth individual is $250,000. Sad enough, the people that buy all the MAPI watches are not people who are making only $250,000. You have to make a lot more money than that, and that does not exist in the media category. So the media buying per se for us doesn't work anymore. We have to go back to that one-on-one -on -one experience. We've used to throw parties for people, for 200, 300 people in our stores. And yes, it's great to drink another bottle of wine, another bottle of champagne, another, bottle, another brand of vodka. But at the end, people got fed, got uh, drunk. Most of them, in, that happened again recently in our store, but didn't buy anything. There was nothing, no interaction. So we used to fail at all of these events. And we changed a lot. We changed a lot by saying, OK, now our events will be only 20 people. It's going to be 15 people. When we use our golf ambassadors, it's going to be with 10 people. We do a golf, uh, something with Formula One, very few. The, the, the fewer, the better. And we have to go back to that one-on-one -on -one interaction. And this is what we, what we have been working on. The advertising will not be useful for us for that particular reason. But going back to where you, what you were saying us earlier, uh, Cindy, is it's a digital. How are we going to communicate with these people going forward? And yes, we've got these iTouch applications, these iPhone applications. Everything when we can communicate directly to the people. And there are so many things that we see every day. Almost every day you see something new coming up, it's already behind. We are late. And we are a world that still works very slow. You know, in the word Swiss, you've got slow. So when you talk to these big headquarters in Switzerland, you bring new ideas coming from the United States, say, the US again. Again, come on, guys, slow down. But this is what's going on in today's world. We have to push every single day to make them understand that this world has changed forever. And the other thing which is very difficult and complicated for us and for our business is, I hope I don't speak too fast. I'm trying to work on that Brooklyn accent uh, a bit more. But one thing that has changed a lot is Internet, the sales on Internet. OK, you've got retailers everywhere that sells all these brands. At the same time, we've got this huge war zone of internet where nobody is authorized. You know that as of today, there isn't one single watch company in the high-end world and even below that that sells on internet directly. That does not exist. And you know why? Because don't, nobody wants to take the chance. It's bad. It's dirty. It's, mm, we don't want, mm, we don't want that. It's uh, ugly. Big mistake. Again, a big mistake that we are making. So, going back to that and the way we're going to communicate with our people and the way we're going to get access to our consumer is, as I said, through special events, the things with our ambassadors, VJ Singh is one of them. It could be a golf outing with President Clinton. We had Quincy Jones in our store on Monday. Just one thing about that event in particular. We had like 40 people in our store. He brought a young kid, 24 years old from Cuba, that was just, how do you say, defective? Defective? That's the word, yeah? That kid was a pure genius. He's one of Quincy's new protege. And the people that were in the room that night were, had a serious amount of money. It was a fundraiser for his foundation. But everybody, everybody looked at that kid like if we were all eight years old. Which leads me to the next pictures. That one with Arnold. By the way, uh, no, that, I'm proud of that one. Me with 25 women only. <laughs> all wearing incredible shoes. Shaq doesn't wear shoes, no. That's the picture I love the most. That's a picture from the beginning of the, 19th, the 20th century. That's a picture I love the most because 100 years later, that's the same picture. We are all kids at heart. 
and what we need to bring back in every single thing we do, whether we use the internet, whether we, whether we use a digital world, everything, it's that. That special experience, that special wow effect that we need to put in every single one of us. And this is an everyday work, something that we did recently Cirque du Soleil partnership, Audemars Piguet and Cirque du Soleil, we enter into a worldwide relationship. Again, we had 50 people that came to see an amazing show and we are all again eight years old. And people didn't buy, the, the purpose was not to sell watches that night, nothing. It was just to bring them an experience that money cannot buy. And that's where I think we are heading to.